Eradicating Tuberculosis in Africa Tuberculosis, or TB, is a global killer, with 2 billion people out of a global population of 7 billion infected with the bacteria that causes this disease. Despite the widespread vaccination and drug treatment, there have been a recent significant rise in the incidence of tuberculosis in Africa, with significant long-term suffering and loss of life. The situation demands urgent attention and decisive action. In light of this, eliminating TB as a focus of the fight against TB in Africa. The Good Morning Africa crew was at the lecture presented by Professor Gavin Churchyard and Dr. Bavesh Kana of the Vitz Orum Coalition, highlighting the key issues related to the complexity of the TB epidemic and the steps required for eradicating of this disease from our society. Dr. Kana is head of Vitz University nodes of the DST and DRF Center of Excellence for Biomedical Tuberculosis Research, where he studies tuberculosis with a focus on identifying novel drug targets. He is an international early career scientist of the Howard Huge Medical Institute and a world leader in this field. In addition to this, a growing percentage of the TB epidemic is characterized by drug-resistant strains of Mycobacterium tuberculosis, the bacterium that causes the disease referred to as tubercle bacteria. So, what is to be done? The current World Health Organization Stop TB Strategy aims to achieve TB elimination by the year 2050. But this can only be achieved by an acceleration in current TB preventive therapy, such as isonized TB preventive therapy, or IPT. The development of new TB drugs, diagnostics, and vaccines, as well as additional strategies. My name is Bavesh Khanna. Um, I'm head of the WITS node of the DST RF Center of Excellence for Biomedical TB Research. Um, it's, it's a center of excellence that's aimed at trying to identify new drug targets um, and trying to identify and answer the key questions that are related to TB research today. Um, I did my PhD at WITS University. I also did my undergraduate bachelor's degree at WITS University and my postdoc I did at WITS University too. Um, so, you know, um, I actually grew up on a farm. Uh, my dad is a farmer and I grew up in a, in a family of farmers. Um, and uh, my dad was a farmer during the time of apartheid. And so we ran a very close-knit community type farm. Um, and numerous farm workers uh, were afflicted with tuberculosis. And during the course of my life, uh, a few close friends also were afflicted with tuberculosis. I had a very intimate association with the disease. I mean, as I was studying in university, I decided that this was really a disease that I wanted to have some impact on. And uh, when I was doing my undergraduate degree, what I found was that, was that there was a lot of focus on HIV and very little focus on tuberculosis, which I saw as a silent killer, um, a killer that was ravaging our communities, very much a South African problem. And then more recently, the emergence of drug resistance has really been an alarming thing. So these, these facts have really sort of pulled me into the TB field and have, have sort of ignited my passion to to have an impact on the disease. So my particular research and the research in our laboratory is really focused on trying to understand the outer cell wall of the bacteria and how that outer cell wall remodels and how that structure changes during the different stages of TB disease. We believe that these different phases of growth that TB goes through is intrinsically related to the way it changes its outer cell wall. So usually, the common strains of, that's a very difficult question to answer. So the common strains of TB bacteria depend on, depend on the environments that you look at. So there are numerous um, uh, uh, Beijing type bacteria. These are, these are um, bacteria that are associated with the Beijing lineage of TB strains. We find a, an increasing prevalence of Beijing bacteria here in Gauteng. Um, we see also family 11, family 13 type bacteria. And recently, we've also seen the emergence of the T1 strain, the LAM3 strain, and the LAM9. You know, the dormancy of TB bacteria is a really interesting phenomenon. And it really comes out of the fact that a huge amount of people who are infected with tuberculosis develop what we call latent tuberculosis infection. So these, these individuals have TB type bacteria, but they give you no signs of disease. And so they termed latently infected. And, and the hypothesis has been for a very long time that these bacteria, that these individuals actually have bacteria that are dormant, bacteria that are not growing. And that is why the patients are not getting sick. However, there's very little evidence to show that dormant bacteria 
malaria exists in people. And so some of our recent research and some published research has uncovered the fact that patients here in South Africa actually have dormant bacteria. When they cough out organisms, a significant proportion of those organisms are dormant. Now that's very, very important because dormant organisms don't respond the same way to drugs as actively growing organisms. So treatment of people who have dormant bacteria is incredibly challenging. So in terms of TB in the rest of Africa, particularly let's focus on Southern Africa, what we found is that there's a lot of HIV associated TB in Southern Africa. In fact, if you look at the numbers that have emerged recently from the WHO, the World Health Organization, there is a huge increase in the amount of TB HIV co-infection in Southern Africa. The TB infection in Southern Africa has largely been driven by the HIV infection. In South Africa in particular, and associated countries, Botswana, uh, Swaziland, there's an increase in drug resistance. We're looking at an increase in drug resistance from about 3% in 2002 to about 9% in 2010. It's a threefold increase in drug resistance. Um, if one looks further in Africa, if you look at TB in the Gambia, a lot of TB in the Gambia is associated with um, a, a TB strain called Mycobacterium africanum. This also causes tuber tuberculosis type disease and it seems to be associated with HIV infected individuals. Drug resistance is an incredibly complicated problem. Look, the introduction of drugs into any clinical setting will eventually lead to some form of resistance. Currently now, the situation that we're looking at is that there is resistance to almost every drug, mono-resistance to almost every drug in every country that has been surveyed for resistance. A more dangerous form of resistance is what is termed multi-drug resistant TB. And this is TB that is resistant to rifampicin and isoniazid the two key drugs that are very important in the treatment regimen program. Um, and then recently, more dangerous forms of drug resistance have emerged, and these have been termed extensively drug resistant or totally drug resistant TB. These forms of TB really limit the treatment options and severely hamper our abilities to eradicate this disease from society. So some of our work is also based on trying to understand why does so much resistance emerge? What are the mechanisms inside the bacterium that drive resistance? So some of the people in my laboratory um, in particular, Dr. Bhavna Godan has picked up on a, on a group of enzymes that are important in repairing DNA. And we believe that these enzymes are quite important in actually determining how resistance emerges. It is possible to eliminate TB. Um, however, it is very difficult to say how long that's going to happen. And I think Professor Churchyard in his presentation here at the prestigious lecture also made a very, very important point. We have tools that work. It is very, very important that we use the tools that work first. And then in order to gain that final edge over the, the disease, we need some new tools. And those tools are currently in development. So I have hope that elimination of TB is possible, but it needs concerted government action, decisive um, uh, uh, political will to ensure that the TB program gets the support that it needs, and rapid rollout of new diagnostics so that people get their patients quickly, uh, patients get their, their diagnosis quickly. And finally, um, it is very, very important to get those individuals who are diagnosed onto treatment quickly. But for people who suffer from TB across Africa, I'd like to say have hope. There are a lot of very bright people working on this disease, and there are a lot of new interventions that are coming out. This is an incredibly exciting time to be working on tuberculosis, and I think that we're going to make a huge impact very soon.